All right. I guess we'll get started. Uh, good morning. I'm the uh, I'm Gordon Dickens. I work for Chariot Solutions, and I'll be talking about J Java EE in the cloud. Um, Not sure what's going on. Uh, if you haven't met me before, I'm an uh, instructor and a mentor for, I work for Chariot Solutions. I teach spring courses, the Maven courses. Um, I, I wrote the STS ref card for DZone, and I blog at uh, both my personal site and Chariot site. Uh, you can follow my Twitter feeds, uh, G Dickens, and it's all technical stuff, not stupid tricks my dog did or things like that. But I might start, I might branch out, but right now it's, it's pretty tech. So uh, LinkedIn and uh, GitHub where I, put random pieces of uh, semi-functional code. Um, I got a JIRA ticket on a thing I've been working on forever, and I'm like, I got a JIRA ticket on code that I didn't even know anybody cared about, so um, feel free to put them in. I just don't know if I'm gonna get to them because they're mostly uh, hobby uh, things anyway, but except in the case where they're applied to a blog or a conference. So um, what we'll start out with is I'll go through just a quick, quick cloud intro. Um, there's a lot that we could get into, and, and it's certainly beyond the scope of uh, this forum to cover the, the full cloud features in depth. Uh, we'll talk about enterprise Java in the cloud, and then specifically JEE and Java 7 in the cloud, and some of the key players, the players that you can use uh, Java, you know, JEE containers in the cloud. So, um, as you can see, there's a lot of facets to the cloud to the cloud uh, decision, I guess, if you will, for your organization. And a lot of this stuff has to do with management choices, you know, um, you know what, what's available, what, how does it affect the stakeholders, benefits, and so forth. We're, we wanna focus specifically as developers in the types of clouds that are out there. So I'm gonna jump ahead, and uh, for those of you that know about the Easter egg coloring thing, pause is the you know, leader and has to stay that way. But, the pause is where, we, where we're going to focus our energy. The, three, the key, three key levels here are infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Software as a service, pretty much, I think probably most of us use on a day-to-day -day basis if you use anything from Google, right? So Google applications are all available to everybody. You're all using the same engine. You're all using the same code base. It's software as a service. Um, in the public you know, arena, that would be salesforce.com. They're a, a big player in the SaaS uh, marketplace. But for our space, we need to look at infrastructure and platform as a service. Infrastructure as a service is really the, you know, it's, this is the stuff that's at the bottom. You know, we want the, the, the hardware as close as we can to it. So that's, uh, you know, the main one that most people know of is Amazon Web Services. I spent, I spoke at um, Java One last year on Spring in the Cloud. And I desperately tried to get Amazon Web Services to work. Now, I'm sure some of you guys probably had great luck with it. I'm not an infrastructure guy, so it, it was a very, very expensive mistake that I made. <laughs> Hundreds of dollars of mistake that I made. So uh, it's just way beyond the scope of my skill set. I don't want to know about uh, that infrastructure at that level. I want to write some code, put it out there, and say, ta-da, and that's about as, ex about as good as I want to get with it. So there's, and there's other players out there. I didn't do too much research except to gather some of the names that are, that are out there in the IAS space. But I'll leave that for the data structure nerds, the, the people that enjoy playing in that space. Um, but for, for us, for, as the application developer, we want to play around with something that we can get um, an application that we have, whether it's existing without any code changes, and that, that does exist, and just push it out to the cloud or write specifically for a platform. And um, you know, one of the oldest ones is Google App Engine. Not really uh, something I'm going to focus on here, simply because Google App Engine is pretty specific in that you have to you have specific limitations and restrictions in how you code. I'm going to say more in the uh, most of the things I do are very trivial um, that uh, enable me to put my application in the cloud. So um, OpenShift is JBoss CloudBees. Um, this. Ambiguous diagram here is the new Oracle Open Cloud. That box uh, that I tilted to the right there. Uh, there. <laughs> I don't have my, my laser thing. Or I probably do. It's buried in that bag that I could climb the Mount Everest with. Um, Heroku, Jelastic, and Cloud Foundry. Now I'm going to focus on a couple of these in the JEE space. Um, I saw a reference to database.com and I went, 
Huh. That's what I didn't know, so I went and looked at it. It's salesforce.com trying to get a, a kind of a generic platform. No luck whatsoever. I went, ah, sign up for free account. Fail. <laughs> done. You're done. I'm done. I have no, I have no time for this. So um, the other ones that we, I had a lot more success with. So what we want to do is we want somebody to do a lot of this stuff for us. Give us a console. We can either put a war up and have that deployed out to the cloud for us, or in a better way, maybe just you know, use a Maven build or something and just push it out to the cloud and have it build. So let's take a look at those types of strategies. But under the covers, we have um, you know, elasticity configured so that if we need more servers, they, they expand um, and we get more servers provisioned or load balanced and so forth. And all the, all the IAAS stuff is just hidden away. It's just really too much. I, again, I, I'm just not that interested in it. It's like there's certain facets, like as, as developers, we're like, yeah, you know what? That's great for the people who enjoy that or are good at it. I, I don't want to spend my energy there. So we're going to look at the PAS or PAS. It's so hard to pronounce these things with uh, these acronyms sometimes. So again, which Java cloud should we go with? Let's take a look forward here. So in the, in the enterprise arena in general, there's kind of two camps for the, for the most part. I mean, there's obviously other, other facets out there. I thought of that this morning as I'm driving. I'm like, I could have put Google, I could have put um, Play up here, and I didn't. I'm like, ah, you know, I'm going to just leave it. I don't want to tinker with my stuff too much right now. But, you know, Spring is obviously a big one, and Java EE. Um, like I said, I presented at... Um, about, about Spring Framework, so I can talk about that offline um, in detail. I have several blogs uh, that I put up on my website for um, Heroku, CloudBees, and Cloud Foundry on how to do that with Spring. It's ridiculously simple to do for any of those things. But in the Java EE space, again, um, Spring has a rapid application tool called Spring Roo, which my colleague Ken Rimple just got published today. Unfortunately, it didn't show up for the manning table. Um, so hopefully the, they'll get that to, to the table tomorrow. Um, and then for the Java EE space, Seam framework is more of a rapid application development tool. I have not played with Seam much more than installing it uh, and for just time reasons, not, not for any religious reasons. Like there's people that have their camp. I, Java EE and Spring, I care. So, you know, I just tend to work a lot more in Spring, so I, I tend to just know it better, but I could care less. It all does the same job. So when... Was that Java 1, the big thing was, oh, Java EE 7, it's all about the cloud. And I'm like, great, it's all about the cloud. So as I'm preparing for this presentation, I'm like, let me find out what that means. And I said, um, after a couple of days of digging and digging, I went, well, let's take a look at Java 7 because I really haven't looked at it yet. And I was afraid to install it on my Mac because I would break either the next class I was teaching or some other demo. So he's like, just put a VM. And I'm like, I don't want to do it. So um, I didn't. And, but anyway, I finally just switched and put the Java 7 on the Mac. And I'm not going backwards unless I have to. So just to kind of, you know, I'm in the well. I'm going to take the snake bites every so often and figure it out. That's because uh, I haven't had that much of a problem yet. So <laughs> I'm there. But will Java 7 help you in the cloud? No. But nothing to do with the cloud. It's just, it's just new language improvements. Um, so we have about, we have, I think I originally said 535, and then I thought somebody here would go, dude, it's 537, or it's 530. I'm like, ah, oh, it's over 500 changes. I, I, I took, I literally downloaded the source code, scanned it all for, I, like, it, for all of the 1.7, you know, string, and found all that, 100, over 170 new classes. Um, most of you guys could care less about the 120 uh, that are surrounding Swing. I could care less. I'm not a Swing developer. I haven't done anything with Swing in a very long time. Not to say it's not good. I just, have, I just don't really care. Um, but a lot of that stuff is around concurrency. A lot of that stuff's around Java NIO, the new file system stuff, really good. Again, I know this isn't cloud-based, but it's really good stuff to just kind of get your head around real quick. Um, there's a diamond operator, they call it. You know how when you define a, uh, a set of collections, you have to put the shape of the collection on the left and the right. So I have a list that has a string in it. And on the right side, you say new list, array list, string. Well, now you don't have to say give it anything on the right. You can just say on the left, this is a list which you take a string. And on the right, you just say new array list. That's it. Done. It's just a shortcut. At least that's my knowledge. By the way, I'm not like, 
in the trenches with this stuff, so there may be depths to it that I just haven't gotten into, but that looks about as simple as it is. Again, new concurrency, there's a fork join um, set of classes that are, are available. I have not played around with them too much. I have some demos that are on my GitHub that you can go and run for all these Java um, features, um, but I haven't really played with it in any great depth. Um, like I said, uh, that's, there's a, a phaser, so that was kind of cool just from the concept that we have a phaser in Java. I have no idea what it does yet, but it's really cool that we have a phaser. Just thinking as, you know, geek, like, lingo goes, that just bumps us up, you know, so all the other people in the, in the Ruby camp or wherever, and we can say, we have phasers. Maybe they, they might already have them, but we have them now. So, and then you have new queuing and dequeuing in, uh, implementations. Um, try catch now can catch multiple exceptions in the same block, that's nice. So you just separate them with that vertical pipe. So you can say catch, you know, my exception pipe, your exception E. Right, that's kind of neat. Um, auto close, this is a new thing where I can actually, in the try block, I define all the statements that I'm going to normally execute in the try block and it'll auto close them at the end. So that annoying cleanup stuff that was, you know, one of the reasons that Spring was like, well, we're not gonna worry about that. We'll take care of all templating that. Well, Java has that now in seven. File and directory classes, like I said, in the, in the new Java, or the java.x.nio package, there's a ton of classes, and they have an object called files, plural, and paths, plural. And both of these give you some nice, convenient ways to get to the operating system level, validate paths, go to the files, get attributes, modify attributes, so you couldn't do things before like that. You can actually go to the operating system and give me the permissions on that file, change the permissions on the file, things like that. So there's a lot more of that stuff. And um, a switch case on string, which I am mixed about, you know, yay, we have switch case. Um, my opinion is that switch case is more often abused than it's valuable, right? If you've got a function and you've got a lot of case switches, should you have one function that handles all that? I don't know. Right? A, a lot of times I've found a, a case where I'd refactor that into a little bit better design, but you have it now, so that's an option. Um, and I did put the link here, uh, it's hard to see, and uh, this, the PDF will be online at uh, the Chariot site or, and probably online as well later on uh, after the conference <coughs> or after today. <coughs> so, what about Java EE7? Well, there's no such thing, right? It's a plan, it's coming out Q3, they swear it's coming out Q3, why? Because they're time boxing it. What does that mean? Whatever's not there goes to JEE8. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking, so it's a race to the finish. That's a good idea. And if, we, if it doesn't make it, we just kick it to the next release. And you're like, but I was banking on this whole JEE7 thing. Well, that's not, uh, that's, the, that's the reality of it. That's, their, that's the statement from um, the Java folks. They're, they're basically saying, uh, it's whatever comes out, comes out. So in the cloud space, the focus is, you know, that's, this is what was all over the, the Oracle press, elasticity, elasticity, I said it right, okay, and multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy always, like, when I think about that, I'm like, isn't that SaaS? That's not really pause, you know, because multi-tenancy to me means multiple clients in the same kind of context. But it's still valuable. It could be valuable in the pause. I just don't have a, a good, like, use case for it in my head. So in the, in the space of the JPA, or I'm sorry, sorry, the JSRs that are going to be cloud enabled. That is JPA 2.1, JMS 2, EJB 3.2, and Servlet 3.1. So I, I did a lot of digging on these. First one, multi-tenancy. Basically, you have a table discriminator. Inside of your JPA table, you could say, this is the column that tells you that it's a different company or a different client or whatever. The only person that provides this right now is Eclipse Link, and Eclipse Link 2.3.2, I think, is the current release. I have this, I remember stupid version numbers because I'm, I'm Captain Maven tuner, you know, so I have versions, remember. But Eclipse Link has that in it. And if you go in there, there's a little thing called, there's an enum for the uh, package. Um, there's an enum for the different types, and uh, only one of them is implemented, so uh, single, which means one table, you have to identify a column. So this stuff's kind of still evolving. That's the point there. Um, and they do have something else, and I don't know what it is. Like it's a, I think it's an Oracle database type thing. I wanna say it's like VCAP or, uh, I can't remember, v, v, it's a three letter thing. It's a VPS or VPD, VPD sounds better. I don't know, but it's something that Oracle specific, like some implementation I went, that's great, I'm not, I, I've 
I trust that it's there and I'm not going to play around with it. But the single table is the only one available. Um, there's some enhancements in JMS. I think I found some things about it a few days ago. Um, so that's in the beta. But in the EJB and Servlet 3.1, there's nothing. I literally downloaded both chunks of code, put them in a diff, and there's differences clearly, but there's nothing I could find the word. Cloud pause, I mean, I'm like going, what else would I call it if I was an uber geek, like a real programmer's programmer, and I couldn't find anything. So they're not really there yet. But that's why I put just up there, enabling cloud. I don't know what that means, but it's all over their press too. So that's what everyone else has said on the web. We're enabling cloud in EJB 3.2. And we're optimizing for pause and cloud support in servlet. I'm not sure, but that's the, that's the gist. That's what they're going with. But anyway, so that's all well and good. Now we know we can just say, you know what, JE7, when it gets here, great. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. But for now, we can still be very productive with J, JE6. So the reality is JE7, yeah, it might have some really good features, but it's still kind of early. So JE6, we got our, this is from the Oracle site. There's 33 JSRs in play. Obviously, we don't use all these, but this is what's in JE6. And we can use this on open source platforms, um, you know, on uh, Glassfish, on uh, JBoss. So if I'm going to go JEE in the cloud, I'm thinking, well, if it's JEE, then I'm really looking at I need a container. And my two open source containers are, there's a Glassfish open source version and JBoss. Uh, application server. So the four kind of uh, platforms that I found, I played with three. I didn't get to the Oracle one, not for any reason, just time. Jelastic is fairly new. They're in beta. And I just, um, I spent a good amount of time playing around with that. And I was very, very pleased with it. Even though it's a, you know, it is a beta. So I did find a couple of like oddities when, with configuration. And they were very responsive. Like it'll come up with a little dialogue and say, um, something bad happened and you can see the detail. It says submit. And like th within hours I got feedback said, yeah, you know, you're, it, it was either one or two answers. You're an idiot, you don't know what you're doing. Or, you know, um, yeah, we're working on that. So, you know, there's, there's a, probably more on the first side. But well, take a look at that. And I have a demo of that. Um, CloudBees. I, have a, I don't have an any cloud demo, but any cloud is a new product by CloudBees. Heidi's out, uh, she has a table outside, she, she can talk to you about more of that detail. But the any cloud platform, originally it was, um, you know, you could put, and by the way, almost all of these support multiple languages. I'm staying in the Java space. I didn't put slides together and say, hey, you can do Ruby and Node.js and a lot, a lot of them have mul um, support for multiple languages. <clears throat> but in the Java space, I did demo CloudBees with Spring push an application right out, works like a champ. I have that running as well. But I did not get to the AnyCloud, which is a new offering for them. But basically, under the covers, I mean, a lot of these guys will provide, um, they just insulate you from that annoying detailed infrastructure stuff. So you say, I need another instance. And it goes, okay, here's another Tomcat server for you. And that's what these, the folks like you know, um, CloudBees do with the AnyCloud platform. And again, any of these can be public cloud, private cloud, or some kind of hybrid. So it can be internal to your organization or, you know, global. So um, JBoss OpenShift, I tried that out the other day. It works great. The only downside I can say with some of these, it, probably most of these, is that your return on feedback, your feedback from your deployment is a drag if it's not right. Because you're deploy, you wait for it to spin up, and then you get a nice ugly stack trace that says, hey, stupid, you forgot this dependency. And I'm like, ugh push. <laughs> and uh, that's where I am right now with OpenShift. I should have that done later, but I haven't gotten it fixed. Of course, I picked a, I picked a ridiculously dumb demo to do. It has more credential stuff, and I should just say with a simple, like, just one step above hello world, and I didn't. So I'll have to fix that. It's actually one of their canned demos they recommend, and I'm like, yeah, that one sounds good. It's, it's got Twitter in it and everything. So, and then Oracle Public Cloud I haven't played with, but so let's take a look at, I'll show you the Jelastic console, and hopefully uh, pop over here to the Chrome. Okay. Uh, let's see. And that's Cloud Bees. This is on Jelastic. So, I mean, it's just a standard, I put a Spring application together, this is on Jelastic. And this is also 
a Gelastic application, and it is the standard one that, it's one of the demos that comes with um, NetBeans. It's a you know, JEE server demo, runs on Glassfish. So I, I basically took the uh, pet catalog demo and just pushed it up to that cloud. The cool thing about Gelastic was I didn't have to do anything different to my code. Aside from the database connection string, which is all the same, right? I mean, it's just a different server, so you just go, okay, production server database. The, the actual config and everything was pretty much just push it out to the, the instance. If I go out to, oh, happen to be on that page here, to do, do, sign into the North America server. Some of these are pretty cool. They, give, they have some really nice um, interfaces for this. Anybody remember? No whammies, no whammies. Yeah, we're there. Okay. <laughs> so we're in. And over here on the left, you'll see that you can't see the really important part, so I'm going to have to zoom this. This is the coolest Mac tool ever. I got you. this thing here. Oh, you, got a, you have a secret. Um, Ah, the old keystone. All right, so let's try it again. Boop, whoop. Yeah, closer. Closer, Clarice. All right, so let's go with, uh, I'm going to still have to slide this over a bit. Come here, you. There we go. Ah. All right. Only because the little twisty thing you need is on the left here. So. Otherwise, I wouldn't care that much. So I have these two app servers or two platforms running. And apparently, I found out last night that I can only have two with the free version because I tried to create one. It goes, You've re you have an error. You want to submit this? And I went, what's the error? And it goes, you're out of instances. And I went, well, that's not really an error. That's kind of a design feature, but sure. Um, I'm sure if I asked, they were, they were very, very nice because they're, you know, again, they're an emerging platform. They're very um, excited for business. So, uh, but I just didn't get around to it since it was last night or this morning. So I have two Glassfish instances running. I've got an instance of MariaDB, which apparently is the forked project from MySQL. So it actually is MySQL under the covers. You, do, you go into MySQL console, all the same things. But when you connect and say, hey, you're in Mari MariaDB, which is basically, it's like the uh, you know, split with um, Hudson and you know, Jenkins, like, you know, they go, eh, you know, I don't want to play with you guys. I'm going to go take my ball and play with these other guys. And that's the same kind of thing. Um, so I tried it out. It was exactly the same connectivity and everything was the same. So, um, but that's my, my instance there. I turn my twisty here and I've got this catalog application. I just named it that. And up here, I have my configuration. So I can open up the, the, the app in the browser, um, restart the node, do, go to config, and that will open up the config directory down here. Let me see if I can gracefully zoom there. And I can then upload files and configure my, my server config stuff here. So it's pretty easy to do. Um, I think, and I didn't report this bug to them. One of the bugs is when you do timeout in your session, you just get errors here that like you don't have permission. It, it doesn't, it's not aware that it timed out. So it's timed out. <laughs> and you just can't change anything. And you're like, it's supposed to save. I'm the, I created it. And it doesn't work. So that's, a, but again, they're still, they're still working that stuff out. And it, it is a, it seemed to be pretty easy to get going. So that's um, the config there. I can look at my log file, same type of stuff. So this was pretty straightforward in setting it up. And the same with the spring version. So I just deployed a spring app to two Tomcat 7 instances. You can, I think with the free version, you get one database instance per platform and you get up to four, um, Four servers, or four virtual servers, run and then distributed with uh, NGINX. I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. It's just, but it's a load balancing thing. That's all I know because the cool little diagram told me that. Here's how I can check that stuff. When you create a new um, instance, it actually pop, you pop up this dialog, and you say, okay, what do you want to have in this server? Let me just zoom back here. So here I have. Two Tomcat instances, I can add up to four. Um, I can choose Tomcat 7 
and I, I don't think I can change it now because it, the instance is running, but I can choose Tomcat 6, Jetty, or Glassfish, JDK 6 or 7, um, and then my database options. And again, this is an instance that's created. You know what? I'll just go through the dialogue for creating one because I just can't hit finish. Whoops, that wasn't what I wanted to happen. Don't. Okay, create environment. Here we go. So um, it defaulted to Glassfish 3, um, Tomcat 6, uh, Jetty 6, Tomcat 7, JDK 6 or 7. You have um, a Maven option to build. I didn't play with this. I, I'm a big fan of Maven. I certainly would have if I had more time, but I got everything working with just uploading the war. So I thought, I'm going to slow my roll before I take, off, take on too many challenges. I think I tried it for five seconds and went, uh, <laughs> go back to the other thing. Um, Database, you know, MySQL, MariaDB, again, uh, the, it's the branch of it, and then Postgres. And actually, I think you find that out if you click on MariaDB info here. It tells you, hey, it's a binary drop and blah, blah, blah. It was developed by the people who blah, 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 right? So you can see the detail there on that. And then you also have NoSQL options here. I think it's only Mongo and Couch at this point. So, um, you know, again, they're getting started. Other, the other cloud platforms have different um, options. So that's pretty much it for setting up an environment. If this were to work, it would take a few minutes. It basically would go out, it would spin up all the instances for me, and then it emails me the credentials and my connection information for my server and for the database. So you'll actually get a, a URL and your credential set to connect to your database and then do all your um, you know, table creation and so forth, and the same for the server. So that's where I had to go, oh, I got to learn the Glassfish thing because I don't really know what was going on. I haven't worked in a JEE server in many years. So, um, but it was pretty easy to set up. Give your environment a name, test, or, well, that's not going to work. Ah, that's an important thing. It's red because this is a public cloud. All these are free ones, they're public. So you put something up there, everybody can get to it. So if you don't want everybody to get to it, or at least not get in, put some security in place but it is a public platform, so it's going to check for availability for a name. So test, uh, let's see. Yeah, so this, this says, hey, that's cool, and I'll hit create, and it'll say, you can't do that. <laughs> and that's where I said, that's where I found out it. Yeah, I only have two instances running, but pretty, pretty simple to get going. All right. Now back to where I was. So again, um, kind of I showed that already. Tomcat, Glassfish, and Jetty are available inside of Jelastic. CloudBees is another option. Again, the CloudBees, any platform, supports the same types of things. And um, what's really neat about the CloudBees platform, and again, I did not get a demo of this working. I just didn't have uh, enough time to, you know, and, and uh, Heidi was saying, you should have just called us or whatever. We would have said, I'm like, ah, it's all time. Um, so... But I, I have got a Spring app running out there, very, very easy to do. Um, the th cool thing about CloudBees is that it's pretty much a CI in a, in a cloud. So you have everything available, including Jenkins, that you can deploy, create on the server and then just push the code out. So you can use Git, SVN, you can do Maven builds, push the code directly out to Jenkins, have it run, and you know, do all the normal CI stuff that you would have done locally in the cloud for you. So there's a, there's a whole infrastructure around the, the CloudBees platform that's pretty nice. For each of these platforms, and I should probably talk about the JBoss one for a second, but I'll get that in a second, the OpenShift. Um, in the Jelastic, it's pretty easy. There's just console config. You have the option of using Maven. You don't have to. I just push, I just upload a war, and then when I go um, to the right of the war file name, I, I click the drop down arrow and I just tell it that you, you go to that instance and then it deploys it. So Jelastic was pretty easy. There's no, nothing I had to do to my code, just pushed it out. Now CloudBees, it's um, the one, one thing I did, I, I like the platform, but one thing I didn't really care for, there's a CloudBees SDK you could download for command line interface. There's no auto update capability to it. So I think the last time I used it, it was like version .7 or something. And I went on recently and 
had to go find out there was a dot e or whatever. There was no like auto way to say, you know, this is an update to this. Not that I found. I mean, there might be. I just didn't see it because it's kind of manual. You download it and you, un, you know, unzip the file and put a path. But um, and then for the web app, I had to create a CloudBees web XML for my Tomcat app, and then that was pretty much it. So I did have to add one thing to my app for my Spring app. It does have versatility in that you can do Maven, you can use Git or SVN, it does have an Eclipse plugin, and it does have support for Jenkins on the server. Um, a very popular player in the JEE, or not JEE, but more the Java space is Heroku, and obviously this is very popular in the, in the Ruby space as well. The one thing you would need in this is you'll need a, a file called proc file that is case sensitive with an uppercase P which I found out the hard way after fighting with the server the first time and then realizing that I had to uppercase the P. I was like, oh, that's swell. So that was maybe documented better, maybe created automatically now, but it's that way. Um, and a lot of these, actually, once we, once we leave these, this side, all these have Ruby gems that are used, you can use to, uh, you install the Ruby gems for the command line interface. They all have them as options. So, for um, Heroku, you have a Ruby gem that you can use to do Heroku command line options, you know, for, for evaluating the server, looking at logs, that sort of thing. Um, they have a, there's another uh, gem called Foreman, which is supposedly helps you in creating the um, proc file. I haven't used it. By the way, the proc file is like JVM parameters. It's like a one-liner. I think there's not much in it. So it's not like this is big config file. It's a, it's a one-line thing. The cool thing is that when you use... Um, when you use Heroku, you can act, you, you check in your code with Git, and it builds and deploys. I mean, you can, I'm sure you can configure it not to auto-deploy, but by default, that's what, it, that's what it does. So if I modify my Heroku code, I'll do a, you know, git add dot, git commit, and then git push, and then it runs. So it's pretty neat that you can spin up that quickly. Um, Cloud Foundry, there's a properties file and a runtime jar. Um, there is Maven support. They have a Ruby gem also in Eclipse IDE, again, that's part of uh, STS as well. And one, the one nice thing about this, because they all have their you know, pluses and minuses, they have a microcloud VM that you can download and run in a, in a VM locally. So you can lower your uh, return time on mis mistakes. <laughs> so it's nice, you, just, you can download this VM, spin it up, and be able to run that in, um, on your local machine. Again, these, you know, only Jelastic and CloudBees and OpenShift are really in the EE space, or have the EE container server, if you will. Um, and OpenShift is the JBoss version, uses Maven, and it does, it actually, I think, is pretty tightly tied with Maven. It was pretty, um, it's actually pretty good because I get checked in and then it ran the Maven build and it gave me all the status for the remote execution of it. So it was, it, it gave me the feedback right away. Um, it uses Git. It, when you uh, actually create your environment, it generates this dot OpenShift project. So it's not something that you have to worry about because it's really development side. There is a Ruby gem. I didn't use it because I just downloaded um, a sample app and then built it and, pu and pushed it out. I'm just missing dependencies, I gotta fix. But um, that, is, that seemed to be very straightforward in configuration. But that's specifically, obviously, for a JBoss solution, because it's gonna run JBoss Application Server 7. Yeah? Does any of this as a clustering support for containers? I think that is, um, I'm not sure if the, you know, the load balancing falls into that same space. Yeah, so I don't, I don't really know how the clustering would work in, the, in that arena at this point. I don't know if you are going to want to follow that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I don't, I don't really know um, if those have those, especially in the, you know, the, I did more of an evaluation of all the, the free versions of everything. I'm sure at the paid level, yeah, they would probably have that because that's going to be important. But uh, yeah, I would think that's there at the paid level. Now, one of the other um, things that I, I found to be a little, um, I don't know, unsettling at first, you need to interoperate. So if I want to build an application, and I've helped a couple of clients design applications where we're using Spring, um, Spring Batch and Spring Integration where we actually will put, um, put a process out on a, on a cloud and then have it spin off multiple threads and execute a batch job, just basically splitting the batch job up, sending it out to multiple VMs, and then collecting the results. Um, doing that in the cloud, 
one thing that I ran into, and in, in this I was pretty much working in Cloud Foundry at the time, was that you can't get to your resources, or at least I couldn't find a way to get to the resources from the outside. In other words, I can't from my local machine go to that, you know, connect to that database server. You have to, that server can connect to it. So my application on that server can connect to the database, but I can't on my machine, right? Only can do is admin stuff. So that may or may not be available. Obviously, if you're using Amazon, like IIS, IAAS, then you're going to have that capability because they're going to give you links because you're renting space on, on some box. But in the case where um, in these POS platforms, you may or may not have that capability. I didn't survey all of them to see which of those features was available, but just be aware that the POS is nice because it takes you away from all that infrastructure headache. But if you need to get to that level, then you have to, you know, in investigate with that pause provider. So check with them to see if that's available if you, if you need to get to it. So um, some of the applications and everything up to here works. <laughs> I have to check that again. This is my one uh, on OpenShift I haven't fixed yet. Um, but I have applications that are running the, um, like I said, I showed the kind of the pop-up screen for the pet catalog and the pet clinic, which are both on Jelastic. I have a Spring app running on CloudBees and an OpenShift, I'm um, that close to fixing my dependencies, but it's not quite there. I have to check these two. I know I have one on Cloud Foundry, but it's not that app, and I have to fix those URL links later on. But I'll, I'll fix those before I post the uh, PDFs up. But uh, you, can, you can try those out because they are, again, all open. This is a public platform. So keep, just keep that in mind. If you're building an application, anybody can see it. So, and you will be restricted, and most of them will have some way of um, defining that. For example, in JBoss, when you set up your cloud, it's rhcloud.com, you set a domain, and then your instances are before that. For um, CloudBees, your domain, and then your app, and Elastic, same kind of format. So they all have some kind of format for this public offering so that they can you know, kind of minimize the amount of potential overlap of names. So uh, that's pretty much wraps up what I want to talk about. You can go out and try this stuff. Almost uh, all of the ones that I talked about have a free sign-on process. It's really simple to get, get one set up. Most of them have really good, um, simple walkthrough instructions. I mean, so it, because this stuff is so new, they really want to baby step you through it. I like the baby step stuff because I'm sometimes just having those dumb moments. I can't figure out why something isn't working. So. Um, I baby step, like the, like the steps, you know, hey, go here, dummy, and install this. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the kind of speed I am, especially with new, new stuff like this. So you can go out there and walk through the installation steps. Uh, again, some of the stuff in Windows can be a little bit, you know, a little bit more work. Like, and I know, and I'm not trying to pick a, a religion here, but, you know, um, you know the, on the Mac, it was easier to set up Ruby and, and other stuff because it kind of was there. But um, most of them have done, you know, they're aware that there are a lot of corporate developers are. Windows, Windows focused, so there are steps for that, um, for setting up your environment on, uh, on Windows. So that's pretty much what I had to cover. If you uh, have any questions, certainly hang out and um, I do the best I can to answer them or get back to you one way or the other. But thanks for coming. <laughs>